Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about optimism and why I think that it is a valuable skill for us all to learn. And I wanted to start with a thought exercise. So imagine that you're at a gas station and there are two options. You can fill your tank with clean fuel or you can fill your tank with contaminated fuel. When you get to the gas station, you get to choose what you put in your car. And if you fill it with clean fuel, you're going to get to work on time. Everything's going to go smoothly. But if you choose the contaminated fuel, obviously things aren't going to run as smoothly. You might even break down and not make it to work. And my point is just that when the world is really saturated with negativity and reasons to be down on ourselves, we have to remember that what thoughts we choose to fill our minds with are what we think about and what we focus on is what fuels our life and our day. And in my battle with mental health issues on and off through my life, uh, a lesson that I'm learning, still learning, is to focus on the really good things and what's important because if you spend time focusing on things a little bit less uh, positive, it can sometimes have a negative effect on your physical and mental health as well as your relationships with others. So learning to understand and practice optimism uh, can be really helpful for that. So I will begin by explaining what optimism means and uh, how I'm going to define it and then why it's important and how it can improve our lives. And then finally I want to share a few ways that you can practice optimism and include it in your daily life and hopefully make a difference. Uh, so first let's talk about what I mean by optimism. Uh, the definition of optimism in the dictionary uh, says hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something. And I think that optimism is more than just hope for the future, uh, but also acceptance and contentment with the present and even the past. And I think that finding balance between being overly optimistic and not seeing realistically, sometimes you can set yourself up for disappointment or failure. And then you can also be too pessimistic where it can have negative effects on your health and happiness. So Winston Churchill once said that a pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. And the way that I interpret this is to not go through life paying attention to just the positive things, but finding ways to accept the negative things and seeing how they can help you to grow and become a stronger person. And uh, the best way for us to start practicing optimism is to understand how it can improve our lives. So a, a few ways that optimism has been shown to improve our physical health, our mental health, and even our relationships. Uh, so according to a website that I found called The Pursuit of Happiness, optimism has an effect on our physical health, uh, anywhere from recovery from illnesses and immunities to how long our lives will last. And optimism can boost your immune system and help you to stay healthier. So uh, there was actually a study that they report on this website where the flu vaccine in elderly people uh, was recorded based on their, you know, the optimism of the, the person that they gave the flu vaccine to. And it reports that greater optimism predicted greater antibody production and a better immune outcome. So just being optimistic helped these people to have higher immunities and, and higher white blood cell count. So that's pretty incredible for your physical health that you can see that something so simple can make such a big impact. Um, obviously with our mental health, optimism helps us coping with difficult times. It helps us to, to not find fault in ourselves when things are going wrong, but kind of see the ways that it can help us to grow and, and face those challenges with positivity. Um, I, I found a scholarly article called Optimism in Close Relationships, where five psychologists performed a few studies on, you know, married people or, or coworkers, and uh, a lot of times people have found that optimism in relationship is more about like the perceived support from your partners and you know based on those studies they found that because we rely heavily on our partners in relationships um, we can feel you know less if we feel more support we can have less conflict and then also we can resolve conflict faster as well as if we feel that support relationships will just last longer and be more fulfilling so you know anywhere from your relationship with your mother to your relationship with your spouse to a coworker or just a friend or a neighbor you know having that positivity means that they can come to you with whatever they need and they know that they have that to fall back on which helps people to be stronger you know knowing that that they have that backup 
So uh, now let's explore the ways that we can take that knowledge and then use it to make a difference in our lives. Uh, so the first thing that I think is really important, and I know that we get told way too many times to uh, exercise, but it really has been shown to uh, increase your endorphins and boost your mood. So even if it's just getting up for 15 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day or whatever you have, to just go for a walk around the block or just around the cubicle or, or you know take a jog, whatever you can do, whatever feels right to you, whatever would help you to be happy because just moving around really does boost your mood. Um, Another way to do that is to manage your time properly. So obviously if you're carving out 10 minutes to go for a walk, you can also maybe set aside a time to spend time doing something that you love, whether that's you know taking a bubble bath or doing a hobby that you enjoy. If you really like beading or paper crafting or if you like playing the guitar, you know, spending some time each day or each week, spending time doing those things for yourself can really help you to find that balance in your life and, and have something to look forward to as well if you if you put it on your calendar, those things that you're doing. Um, a lot of really important thing that somebody that a lot of people don't think about is surrounding yourself with people who don't ask too much of you. Uh, a lot of times people will really wear us out. They, they expect too much of us. They want us to be in certain places at certain times. And we need to really take a moment to kind of understand what's important to us. And we need to surround ourselves with people who make us feel confident and relaxed and supported at all times. And it will help us to be healthier and be more supportive to those people as well. Um, the thing that I have found the most helpful for me is what I call mindfulness, which you know is like thought exercises and, and visualization. Um, one example is this book that I have here called Freedom from Anxiety. I read this and my favorite thing about it was sort of a visualization exercise about turning the light on in a different room. So the quote from the book says, when the light is on in a room of anxiety, then the light is off in other more pleasing rooms. But the other rooms do exist even if we haven't been spending enough time in them. So for me, it's more about rewiring the automatic reaction my brain does. So a lot of times, you know, you wake up in the morning and you automatically just choose the contaminated fuel and you end up stuck in this place of negativity. Whereas if you can think, no, I don't want to be in this room. I'm going to turn the light on in a different room. It kind of retrains my brain and you can focus on more positive things. Uh, another really great visualization that I've found is in actually a fiction novel by John Green called Turtles All the Way Down, where the main character describes her OCD and her anxiety as thought spirals that she gets kind of stuck into and they just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper until she can't find her way out. And for me, just being able to visualize this spiral, this quicksand that you fall into, helped me to really identify the pits that my mind can fall into. And then once I can visualize them, I can explain them to my husband and, you know, my friends. And it's much easier to get out of those places and for other people in my life to be able to understand and support me. And uh, one of the ways that I kind of avoid those thought spirals in the first place is to journal. So this is very important. And if there's one thing that you can do to make this change in your life, this is what I recommend. So I got this journal for my mom that is called uh, Starting Days with Gratitude. So it just gives you a spot in your journal where you can actually write three things down each day three positive things that you are grateful for um, and it kind of helps you to just reframe your life a little bit. Sometimes when I feel very overwhelmed with a lot of negative things, I'll list all those things and then once I get done with all the things, just taking them all down, then I write the exact number of things on the other side of the paper that are positive about my life. And once I've done that, it really helps me to visualize the balance and reminds me that Everything isn't falling apart. It only seems that way because that's what I'm focused on. And if I turn the light on in the more positive rooms in my brain, then I always feel better afterwards. So now that I've shared with you the reason why I believe that optimism is one of the most valuable skills that you can learn, I hope to inspire you and to learn more a little bit and practice uh, optimism in whatever ways work for you. And so after learning what optim optimism is, is and why it's important. I hope that the one thing that you do try to do is uh, a challenge that I'd like to leave you with, which is 
that for 30 days, uh, taking a journal like this one or also just a regular, you know, just paper, you can write it down, but try to inspire yourself to write down something that you're grateful for, something great that happened to you that day, and something that you're looking forward to for the future, whether it's tomorrow or a week from now, so that you can kind of focus on what things are good about your life and then gives you something to to see in the future that you're working towards which is a really great way to end your day or to start your day whatever time you want to do that whatever you want to carve aside that time for yourself and uh, before I go I'd like to leave you with one last story so there was a prosecutor uh, in Italy who fought against the mafia and his name was Giovanni Falcone and he once said that he who doesn't fear death dies only once he faced death every day by fighting against an organized and deadly group of criminals. And he knew that if he spent his time worrying about death, then he would have to experience his death over and over before it even occurred. And I think about this a lot, that if we spend our time focusing on all the things that could go wrong in our lives, then we force ourselves to suffer before there's any reason to suffer. But if we stay optimistic and focus on the opportunities that lie in front of us, and we can all live more meaningful and fulfilling lives. So thank you and good luck.